Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Diablo 4. We're going to start by Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, display, make sure that you're playing window full screen. For the adapter, make sure also that you're running your GPU. I know some people are playing on a laptop and sometimes they're seeing an integrated video card when they have a dedicated one. So make sure that you're using the dedicated one. For resolution, make sure that you're re using the native resolution of your monitor. So if you have a 1080p monitor, 4K monitor, just choose the proper resolution. For sharpened image, if you're not using the LSS, I, I recommend to just start at 10. Uh, it will not affect your FPS. By the way, it's more about the clarity of your image. If you're using a DLSS, start at 20. Look at your uh, game. If, it, if it's too blurry, just go a little bit higher. After that, for the vertical sync, I'm not using it. I like to just unlock my, my FPS and have the lowest input lag. If you're struggling with your thermals inside of your computer, you can definitely lock your FPS if you want in this game. If you don't like the tiering the, uh, when you're playing the game, just activate your vertical sync. It's not that bad input lag that you will add. You're not playing Valorant or CS. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can limit your uh, cutscene FPS if you want. Uh, so if you have st you're struggling with your um, your thermals, you can definitely check that. But I will not check this. After that, for performance, you have the resolution uh, percentage that will change uh, depending on what type of uh, upscaling that you're using. So for an example here, I'm using the DLSS. If I deactivate it, you will see that the percentage will be at 100. So if you don't have the DLSS technology, just make sure that you're playing at 100. If you're using DLSS, I recommend to go with quality. You will have a nice uh, increase in your FPS, 15 to 20% boost in your FPS. And if you have the latest version of uh, NVIDIA video card, the 4000 series, make sure that you're running the frame generation. You can expect 40% boost in your FPS. It's pretty, pretty huge. After that, the max foreground FPS, I'm playing at 240. I just unlocked them. Uh, again, if you're limited on with your thermals uh, and you're playing for, on a 60 Hertz monitor, maybe just lock your FPS at 60. Uh, make sure that you activate the reflect low latency at enable if you have an NVIDIA card. After that, texture quality, anisotropic filtering. I'm playing Ultra in 16X. If you have 6 gig of, of VRAM and more on your GPU, if you have 4 gig, go I and 8X. If you have 3 gig, go medium and 4X. And if you have less than 3 gig, just go low and off. After that, for shadow quality, this one is pretty much the power render that will provide you the most of your FPS. If I compare IS to low, you can expect 20% boost in your FPS. So definitely go with that. Uncheck the dynamic shadows, soft shadows, another 8% over there. Shader quality, not a huge difference between low and medium. So that's why my recommendation is medium. If you're going at high, you're going to lose 3%. So it really depends where you are in the guide. Uh, do you struggle with the game? If you're not struggling, go with high. If you struggle, go with medium. Ambient occlusion. Um, if you go at off, you can expect 9% boost in your FPS. But the thing is, the game looks very flat without it. So I recommend something like low or medium. But you will lose 3 to 4% if you're using it. 
fog quality i recommend to go with medium uh, not a huge difference between low if you don't like this effect just disactivate it and put it at low but normally at medium you should run this fine it's pretty much the same thing with clutter quality uh, medium is good when you start uh, to go at i and is you will have some pretty big drop two to three percent fps for each bracket so i recommend to go with medium Fuel quality, 1% different between low and medium and 3% with high, so that's why I recommend to go with medium. Water simulation quality, I recommend to go with low. Anti-aliasing, not a lot of option over there. Normally you have like uh, off FXAA, TAA and stuff like that. So I recommend to go with low. I feel like I, the game looks a little bit blurry, so that's why I'm going with low. And also you will gain some FPS. Geometric complexity go with medium. Uh, you can expect 3% over there. If you go at low, not a huge difference in your FPS also. So that's why I recommend to go with medium. And for all of it, the rest of it, terrain geometry go with low. Physic you will see and particle quality at low. You can expect uh, a big improvement in your FPS. Not necessarily more FPS, but it will stabilize your FPS. You will not getting some random drop 20, 30 FPS when you're fighting and you see a lot of particle at your screen. So really important to go with low. Reflection, pretty much the same thing. And screen, face, re screen space, sorry, reflection, go with off. Distortion, I recommend to disactivate it. Better uh, image quality when you're using it. It's less... Uh, uh, like less noise if i can say and low fx pretty much the last resort if you're still struggling with your fps in this game just check it and you can expect some uh, boost in your fps so that's pretty much it for my diablo 4 guide if you have any question just comment in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel peace